Welcome back to Off the Record. What an interesting conversation I've been having with you. Uh, Arundhati Subramaniam is a Mumbai-based uh, poet, and uh, but she's a poet who, who likes to be in different places. She calls it threshold politics. Uh, she says that habitat is not so much uh, belonging to a place, but it's more belonging to a moment in time when there is perfect grace. I did say that. You said that. And I thought it was very beautiful because I believe that too. A person can be your habitat, you know. It need not be a place. I think there, it's yeah? about finding moments when you kind of belong inside your own skin mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and arriving at those moments. And those don't happen very often, do they? So Arundhati has uh, three books of uh, poetry uh, published. She is also the author of a book called The Book of Buddha. So I'd like to read from this poem home because it, it also brings in a slight Buddhist element, I thought, you know. So, may I? Yeah. Please. Give me a home that isn't mine, where I can slip in and out of rooms without a trace, never worrying about the plumbing, the colour of the curtains, the cacophony of books by the bedside. A home that I can wear lightly, where the rooms aren't clogged with yesterday's conversations, where the self doesn't bloat to fill in the crevices. A home like this body, so alien when I try to belong, so hospitable when I decide I'm just visiting. It's beautiful. You know, the reason why I call it Buddhist is because I did a Vipassana meditation course and this is what your teacher tells you. She says, if you try very hard to belong and, you know, center yourself and focus on sensations, you're never going to fit in. Just let it be. Just visit yourself. Visit sensations. Mm -hmm. And I also know that you've... Uh, read the Tibetan book of living and dying. Mm. Uh, you've been uh, doing a lot of spiritual practice of late. So what's happening at this time in your life? It's, I think there was a certain point, Anu, when I felt that uh, poetry for me has always been about grappling with, with all the things that really seem to count. I know that was a really big and That's such a big question that I'm trying to think of where to begin. <laughs> Let me say this. I do think that I've always believed that poetry came the closest for me in dealing with the things that I thought counted. It seemed to be the place where you could talk about life and death. It seemed to be a place where you could talk about love and sex. It seemed to be a place where you could talk about the things that really make up the basis of your life, or what I thought made up the basis of my life. It comes very close, but there was a certain point in time, perhaps more than 15 years ago, when I felt that while poetry goes deep, it doesn't seem to go deep enough. That was a moment that happened. It was some kind of near-death experience that happened, perhaps. But I think it was around that time that I felt that I needed deeper sources of nourishment, perhaps. So I suppose the spiritual journey is part of that. It's been about uh, looking for that, mm. looking for deeper sources. But I think poetry has been very much part of that journey of looking as well. So um, you go to Tirvanamale, you go to an ashram in Coimbatore. Um, do you write there? Do you feel that there are moments of grace when you're in these places? I think these are particularly charged atmospheres, there's no doubt about that. The presence of my guru in uh, Coimbatore at the Isha Yoga Center, Sadhguru, has also meant a great deal for me in the past six years. So going to a space like the ashram becomes a place to dig in to oneself in a way and focus on some of the things that seem to really matter. Writing is part of it. You know, I recently had a, a, a bit of a, a small accident and I'm not somebody who thinks about uh, death at all. Mm -hmm. But I think the incident rattled me so much that, um, you know, I, I just thought I never want to let go. I want to be alive. I want to be immortal. So is writing a way, do you, do you think that writing is a way of facing the fear of death or are we going too deep or are we No, I think writing is certainly part of it, but it doesn't offer consolation enough. It was when I felt it didn't offer me consolation enough that I felt I needed to draw on other stuff too, perhaps look for something deeper as well. But there's no doubt about the fact that poetry, particularly because it is a way of patterning sound and silence, is a way of going as deep as one conceivably can with words it's not deep enough. I mean, this topic we could talk about for hours, but I do want to ask you about, uh, about what it is um, writing in English, because I think borders have broken, lines have blurred, 
the world is uh, one big open place world literature is accessible to everyone mm-hmm. um, we're all connected by the internet do do you still face questions about uh, you being an indian poet writing in english do you is that an issue <laughs> at all are you are you leading up to the welsh critic poem yes. you know people don't usually ask that question i think it's increasingly accepted that english is as indian a language as any other and that it's um, as indian as cricket and as indian as democracy it's accepted and yet there are subtle ways in which that argument comes up you know there are more nativist impulses that still ask you whether you're indian enough but i think that's part of another much larger debate isn't it anu there are yeah. always voices asking us whether we are hindu enough mm-hmm. indian enough mm-hmm. modern enough post colonial enough woman enough it's part of that and what does it feel like to be the indian editor for the poetry international web it must be very exciting because you have contributions from all over the country it's a license yeah. to read poetry mm-hmm. you know it's a right license to read varied poetry in from different languages in translation i can't think of anything more exciting actually and so are you going to do a lot of lot, lot more other collaborations like what you've done uh, done with valia kaur is that just a one off thing it has to really arise uh, very organically otherwise i'm not sure i'd trust it mm-hmm. in the case of this particular collaboration it grew very naturally out of conversations that we've been having if that happens again i look forward to it well, i'm really glad this happened because i got to see you after 9 years absolutely uh, and we got to see such a beautiful performance it's going to be unforget it is unforgettable mm-hmm. and i think uh, we called it poetry in motion i think we couldn't have thought of a better mm-hmm. phrase to for that concert that's right yeah. absolutely thank you very much for joining us and you should come back and do a lot more readings in chennai you you i don't think you came uh, to do uh, not since you know, poetry in, that. not since prakriti mm-hmm. a couple of years ago thank you anna. thank you great chatting with you thank you thank you for joining us